Anyway, I hope you will have forgiven some of the cheesy jokes, but I thought I'd better give you the answers. What do you call a horse in disguise? Mask a pony. And which has more legs, a horse or no, le no horse? No horse, obviously. No horse has five legs. Think about it. No horse has five legs. Now, enough joking around. Uh, I need to get off my high horse and get down to business. Throughout the past couple of weeks, animal rights activists have been disrupting one of the great British institutions of horse racing. The spell of protest reached its peak over the weekend at the Grand National when protesters attempted to gain entry to the track. Over a hundred have been arrested. But perhaps most interestingly and worryingly, after three horses died at the event, one of the trainers who spoke to GDB News an hour ago on Nigel's show claimed the protesters indirectly caused his horse's death. I'm joined now by Animal Rising spokesman Ben Newman. Ben. Evening. Thank you for coming in. Um, I don't know if you heard the trainer of Hill 16. Yeah. But he says that the disruption caused, the tension that caused with a highly strung animal, was one of the reasons Hill 16 died. Yeah. Now, you're a protester, you are protesting in favour of animal rights. That must be the last thing you want to happen. Yes, yeah, so I've been hearing this all day. I was actually on, a, on the BBC with him earlier this morning, and it's just ridiculous. So I, I was on a talk TV a week ago uh, with, with the great Julia Hartley uh, Brewer, and said the reason we're dis going to disrupt the Grand National is because I watched a video from 2019 and over the first jump a horse falls over and breaks her neck. And then when I watched the video most recently, I actually thought it was a video from the same, from the same year. It was a completely predictable outcome and, but, and there's nothing But this horse has gone around the course safely many times before and you could see from the um, preparation beforehand that the animals were getting very stressed by the delay in starting and that that was the wrong... Uh, way for them to be starting the race. I mean, is it? The, so I'm sure Sandy's a n nice guy, but he, there's clearly a well, message. He knows animals, here. wouldn't he? Because he trains them. Yeah. You, you know, he would know his horses, and trainers uh, have a very close relationship with their horses. Yeah. So if the horses really were clearly that stressed, they could have decided not to run the race. We were trying to stop the race. We didn't want it to run, but of course they wouldn't stop running the race because there's hundreds of millions bet on it. And all the breeders also want to make money from the horses winning. So the only reason the horses are running that race is to make money. Well, and it's a legal activity that people are sure. allowed to do this. If you want to stop horse racing, why don't you stand for Parliament on that platform? Well, maybe, maybe I will one day, but the, that, that's a long way away. But I don't think I've ever seen um, an action of, the, of, the, of this type that caused disruption on this scale to re receive so much public support. If you've been listening to any of the radio call-ins or even the comments, the trolls have gone running. <laughs> uh, and and um, there, there's huge public support for this. So it, If there's support for it, I'll go back to my yeah. question, why don't you stand for Parliament? Because if there's that much support for it, you would win elections. Yeah, well, protest is... Uh, so this is about democracy, and protest is a fundamental part of democracy. It always has been and it always will be. So there's nothing unusual about people... Well, but there's protest and protest, isn't there? Yeah. I, mean, I, I think we can maybe good time to look at the events from the crucible uh, this evening because yeah. there's been a protest there and do you think that is a legitimate form of protest too to the extent you're, you've heard about it we're going to see the clip now hmm. Job Perry, four. well I don't quite know what that was for <laughs> And do you think that's democratic protest or that's hooliganism? Well, they're trying to raise the alarm on, on, on the climate crisis and they didn't hurt anyone. But is that effective? That, that's the question. Is, is that effective? And, and maybe it is, maybe it isn't. But that's not really what we're organi we didn't organise it. So. But you were trying to do the same thing, effectively. You were trying to disrupt and stop yeah. a race that gives people a lot of pleasure that's a legal activity. Uh, yeah. You could have marched in Parliament Square. That's well, a legitimate I, form of protest, rather yeah. than this violent, aggressive protest that disrupts legal events. That's was, where I think there's a yeah. dividing line. Well, it wasn't um, violent or aggressive. So people just walked onto the race course. Everyone was wearing pink T-shirts, um, and it was completely... Not, there were 100... And, and also, there's a certain democratic element to it. It was 100 and, uh, 118 people got arrested, and it's, it's, that's not... And, and you can say that's a small number, but it's not 118 people signing petition. People really do care about this, and that's been reflected uh, by the amount but of support. But is that that's why happened. you have to go for direct action? Because actually, 118 marching down Whitehall, you wouldn't even notice, would oh. you? They'd all be on the pavement. 
Yeah, of course. It's, you know, you, you'd get, of course, just walking down the street doing nothing. So you, you have to cause a fuss, and that's how... It... But do you, or is this symbolic of the fact you've got very small numbers, and therefore to get attention, you have to take extreme measures? We haven't got very small numbers, so... Um... Then why didn't you have a proper march down Whitehall to show your big numbers? I mean, if you've organised a protest, I, even if you've got uh, 10,000 people marching down Whitehall, you wouldn't get pressed for it. So you've yeah. got small numbers. That's the thing. On the Iraq war, they had two million people marching down yeah, Whitehall. Yeah, well, the Iraq war On the Countryside ahead, Alliance, yeah. in favour of countryside pursuits, they had over a million people marching down Whitehall. That's why I'm saying to you, it's small well, I numbers. I never heard of that either. So you so. have to be disruptive, you have hmm. to do things that are illegal, because you don't actually have democratic support. I think it's quite hard to get... The, the, the people are willing... Everyone there got arrested and may face legal consequences. So that's, that's, I guess you could say, the tip of the iceberg. But there is a huge amount of support. You, honestly, LBC, it was, it was the, the, the jockey... The only people coming out to defend it are the Horse Jockey Association, breeders and, and uh, racehorse you trainers. Keep on oh, saying, and, and, and your you good keep self. on saying there's huge amount of support. You've got 118 people. You don't stand for Parliament, you don't try and win elections, you don't try and organise proper marches, because actually you haven't got huge support. You've got a few people on social media. That's not huge support. Well, we're going to see, actually, because there's a YouGov, the YouGov poll. Um, they've said today they're going to test. Um, it's going to be about the Grand National. So... So we can we can debate this. <laughs> we can go around in circles, but yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll see we'll see we'll see on that um, how much. We can, but I, I'd yeah. reiterate my challenge that you should stand for Parliament, because if you really yeah. believe that there is popular support for this, I, I, you may need to persuade a political party to take up this cause, or set up your own party. But it's the yeah. same challenge to the Just Stop Oil people. If you really believe you've got this support, why on earth aren't you standing for Parliament? Yeah. I would, well, I, I would hope I, to give you the last word. I've talked too much, because <laughs> apparently I've got to go over to the, to the next programme. Um, because that's all from me, but up next is the Revere Danworth.